Hey, what's up? David with Brazos Valley Strength. And today I'm gonna make a really quick video on what I think is the best way to make your grip effectively limitlessly strong for deadlifts. So a little backstory here, I guess. I'm not a fan of hook grip. I, I've, I've probably switched more people away from hook grip than I've ever had switched from mixed grip to hook grip. I don't think that it's wrong for everyone. It just seems to be pretty inconsistent. Even people that have done it for a long, long time, I've seen it pretty often that those people still on their third deadlift in competition slides right out of their hands. I think it's a great tool for the people that it works for, but I don't think that people should be rushing to try to switch to hook as their grip fix. I think we can come up with some other tools here. Also, I'm a big fan of training with straps. So what that means is I do get less grip work overall, but I think that the trade-off here is much better for overall deadlift strength. That lots of times just from being uncomfortable, tearing hands, you know, just getting fatigued in my grip, the pain of the bar or whatever, um, those things can impact my training for my deadlifts on rep work, just the total volume that I want to be able to do, especially things like RDLs or stiff leg deadlifts with higher reps. Those things can decrease our ability to actually train at the loads and just the, the total intensity that we really need to if we're unwilling to use straps at times. I have a video on straps. I actually talked about the heavy holds we're gonna talk about here in that video, but I wanted to elaborate a little bit further here. So I'm a big fan of straps, but I think that most of the time we want to be using our straps on rep work or just to supplement at times some of the programming that we want to be able to do, but maybe our grip can't manage it. Maybe we want to do more heavy singles. And after one or two, we start getting a little fatigued. We feel the bar slipping. If we still think that is the best programming option, throw some straps on. We can get stronger from doing that. But I do think that we need to have the ability to cover those gaps that if we are acknowledging that we're making some choices that our grip isn't always going to be as absolutely as strong as it possibly could be if we were only doing training with our grip all the time, I think that we can make our grip strong selectively when we really need it to be. So my tool here is just going to be heavy holds in the rack. These are not rack pulls. We're not doing reps with this. I really don't think that the rack holds or rack pulls I don't think that it's really increasing a bunch of strength other places, but I have found that at times my lockout feels a little bit better from these. You can probably see in some of the, the videos that I'll show here, sometimes as a sumo lifter, my timing gets better with locking out my knees than moving my shoulders back. That can actually be one of the limitations for grip with people that deadlift sumo, that just that bad timing, and I have other videos on this. If you, if you wanna check that out, watch the Fix Your Lockout video, that'll elaborate on that. But just having poor lockout timing can be a big deal if we're pulling our hands across our grips or our hands across our thighs and it affects our grip. So with this, it does actually force us to have good timing up top, but I think the difference, what we're really the main differentiation between just doing a single set of heavy holds for time, and I'll talk about specifics, versus doing multiple reps, is that we're trying to set the grip well one time rather than that fatigue of setting it over and over again and having the grip be slightly different, starting to wear on the hands a little bit more and actually go in the opposite direction. The same reason that I don't really like doing rep sets when I'm actually deadlifting would be why I don't think that multiple reps on a rack pull is the same thing as what we're doing here. So to actually execute this, what I generally recommend is two sets, it doesn't need to be a whole lot, of about 10 second holds. I think that people really underestimate how challenging these should be. If, you've, if you're coached by me and you're watching this video, you'll absolutely know there is anxiety approaching these sets. That for these to be effective, it really needs to be extremely uncomfortable. That the, the feeling of picking it up and holding it and fighting for that whole 10 seconds should be very, very challenging. So I'm working towards loads. Uh, my most recent, I'm doing these for week two now. I've worked up to 700 pounds for a set of 10 second holds. I deadlift into the 800s, but it's not something that I can do in these rack pulls. I think a lot of times the, the recommendation is to get around your max. 
I think most of the time from my experience with clients doing these, I don't think that people get all the way there. I, I think it's, it's close, but you know, we certainly have that as a goal. But if you're not able to hold your max, fine. But I'm definitely trying to challenge these as much as I possibly can. I found the 700 to be pretty challenging. I actually tried to go up to 770 and I couldn't get it all the way out the rack. I think some of that is just leverage to get it off. And actually, that's a good point to talk about here is that sometimes being slightly lower for your rack pull, rack hold, can be better here. That we do get a little bit better leverage with the legs to be able to get the bar moving. If it's too high and then we're hovering and kind of touching the rack, it also is a negative thing because we end up kind of holding the shoulders too shrugged. So we want to feel like our arms can really drag. So on top of just training that grip for those 10 second holds, two 10 second max effort holds, I do think that the grip strength goes a long way. We actually get stronger in our grip, but I think that the confidence that we get from that one rep, it's essentially one rep with a long hold, that one rep goes a long, long way when we're actually training the deadlift singles. So I think that this, doing these holds as heavy as we can, is more specific than just not using straps, right? So if that's a counter argument to this, that you could say, just don't use straps, your grip will be fine. I don't think that those are the same thing. I don't think that rep work and, and the kind of the jostling around and disruption of the grip is the same because when your grip gets uncomfortable, we start holding our arms different. We start holding things a little bit closer. We grip it deep in our hands and it's not necessarily the same rep. So when we need our grip to be very strong, when we're really challenging our singles, we can come back to these heavy holds. I find that I do them heading into competitions and after two weeks or three weeks of doing it, my grip feels so much better and my deadlift gets significantly stronger on the top end where I need it to be from my grip feeling good and my confidence off the floor, both in my grip that I know I can set it and it can be very strong and from those other feelings of having my arms hang very, very long. Like I said, straps help with that. Straps help me feel those things when I'm actually doing reps. So I, I think that those two things really work together. But I think that this is an excellent tool for every, anyone if you feel like you're trying to do singles, particularly singles, not necessarily rep work. But if you're trying to do singles and you're feeling like you have doubts with your grip, that you're not setting it appropriately, the bar's slipping in your hands, throw in some of these rack holds and see how quickly your grip gets stronger. I usually recommend doing it into competitions. You can do it in normal training, but I would say just do it for a block, right? Four weeks, five weeks, and you'll probably get to where you need to be and any time that your grip feels like it's suffering after that, bring back in the rack holds. And I'm, from my experience working with people, it's a very, very quick fix and the deadlift feels significantly stronger after you throw those back in. So if this video is helpful, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.